Good afternoon, everybody. It's Mike, the Bowtie Writer here. Happy Tuesday. I want to continue our conversation that we started last week about gaming because I think that gaming is a unique and powerful medium that has a lot of rewarding stories and lessons that you can take into your own writing. However, tabletop role-playing games are also fundamentally a different medium. And as a consequence, there are some lessons that you might take away from them that are less than good. I myself learned a lot of the wrong lessons as well from my tabletop role-playing games. And I want to go over those mistakes. As such, today, let's go over six bad writing lessons from tabletop role-playing games. Let's get to it. Number one, conflict is more than combat. In tabletop role-playing games, particularly some of the big ones like Pathfinder or Dungeons & Dragons, combat is baked into the very core of the game. In one of my first attempts at a fantasy novel, it seemed like every other scene ended in some kind of sword fight or showdown. And I, for a long time, just could not figure out how to add conflict that didn't end up in some sort of fisticuffs. Again, I'm not saying that combat is inherently bad in a novel. There are plenty of famous duels and sword fights and magical throwdowns with bad guys, and that's okay. The thing to be wary of, however, is if your only form of conflict is combat. That's where it starts to become a problem in your writing, and you need to start trying to work on diversifying your forms of conflict. Number two. Fights in tabletop role-playing games are fundamentally different from fights and novels. This is probably one of the starker differences between the two mediums. In a tabletop role-playing game, the purpose of a combat scene is to allow each character to use their individual skills that have been built up over the course of the game. It lets them feel awesome. The needs of a book, however, are very different. There, the purpose of combat is actually as a vehicle for characterization. Because the primary goal is to show us something about characters, the stuff that's not important, you just don't show us. You don't show the reader. That random longsword slash that just lowered the bad guy's HP by 15? Don't care about it. Not important in a novel. In a novel, you only need to show three things. Number one, show us the move that starts the fight. Number two, show us the move that actually ended the fight. And then number three, Show us any beats that tell us something about the character. Do they refuse to fight them because they were just simply too honorable? Do they draw a knife and start fighting dirty? Or did they go crazy and just start bashing their head against an anvil? These things all show us very different things about the characters who are involved in the fight. And remember, that's the purpose of combat in novels. So just remember, when you're trying to write a fight scene in a novel, don't think of it like a tabletop role-playing game. Don't think of it like that at all. Instead, start thinking about what are the things you want to show us about those characters who are involved in that fight. Number three, you cannot have six protagonists. Now, I want to be clear. When I am talking about protagonists, I am talking about major recurring characters that we have at least two major point of view scenes from. The reason for this is that in a tabletop role-playing game, you have a lot of different sessions where each character gets their chance to sign and be the center of attention, and that's great. In a novel, you only have three, four, five hundred pages. You don't have as much space, so it's very, very hard to juggle that many point of views. Second of all, point of views aren't free. There's a reader overhead because your readers have to keep track of all these different voices and tones and goals. And second of all, when you start looking at adding multiple point of views, it drastically increases the length of your work. That's not to say that you can't have an ensemble cast of heroes. You absolutely can. The thing that immediately springs to mind are books like The Expanse, where you have a whole crew of people together on a spaceship working together. However, when you look at those novels, the thing that you'll frequently notice is that they confine themselves not to the whole crew's point of view, but instead to one or two major characters. And that is an important distinction that makes it much more easier for the writer to manage. Number four, blacksmith syndrome. In a lot of my early D&D games, I was heavily influenced by video games. My NPCs in that game were just complete cardboard cutouts. They had no personality to them at all. But in a tabletop role-playing game, you can also kind of force that involvement. You can kind of force that character to be developed. If you're meeting that blacksmith that's just a cardboard cutout, your character can walk up and say, well, how did you get into blacksmithing? Tell me about your family. How's your husband or wife? You know, I don't judge. In a novel, your readers don't have that luxury. Just remember that in a novel, it's even more important because your readers are looking to you to immerse them into the story and developing those side characters is an integral part of that. Number five, rooms are not 40 foot by 60 foot. 
So we've all been there where you've got a sheet of graph paper and you have an idea and you start drawing and you start laying it out and then BAM! You've got a completed dungeon, you're ready to fill it with monsters and turn the players loose. And when I started writing, I took that same gusto and ported it over to my books. I made maps of everything. And the problem is, is that those maps were leading me in the wrong direction. I still remember, I was trying to write how this character was zigzagging and winding through the different hallways to get to the throne room, when I realized sometime later I could just write, he ran to the throne room. Fundamentally, I don't care about how many squares a room is. I care about what's a room feel like. Is it a dank, narrow dungeon where you're wading through ankle-deep muck and a cold chill blowing through the passageway? Is it a quiet little library where you can walk around and find any magical book that you want? Or is it a bar where everyone is banging their mugs on the table, ready to drink the night away? When you're working on writing a novel, don't worry about exact floor plans. They don't matter. Just start worrying about what does the place feel like. Lastly, number six, be wary of how role-playing games handle race. Okay, so for this one, I want to talk about Dungeons & Dragons. A lot of other games were influenced by it as well, but Dungeons & Dragons is one of the first that started it. In character creation, you start choosing a race. And from a game design perspective, they include this to give your characters additional abilities, different modifiers to your ability scores, and some extra customization options. However, when you start looking at how they handle race... I am not an expert in this by any means. I'm a white guy who's still trying to learn how to write diversity better. I'm not all the way there. I'm still trying to grow this skill set myself. And it's something that I'm just not really in a position to talk about. As such, I'm not going to tell you how you should handle a situation like this in your novel. I, I'm not the person to say that. But I do want to wave a red flag around and tell you that there are some seriously problematic undertones to the way they handle race in these role-playing games. I'm going to put some links down below in the description to some people who are much more qualified to talk about these issues, and they have articulated a lot of the problems in much more depth than I possibly could do it justice in a YouTube video. Alright, that's it. That's all I have for this week. Those are the six bad writing lessons that I learned from tabletop role-playing games. I hope you can avoid the mistakes that I did. What about you? Do you have any kinds of questions or lessons that you've learned from tabletop role-playing games, good or bad? Let me know down in the comments, or feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I'm at BowtieWriter. As always, if you liked what you saw, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. That really does help me out. I do appreciate getting my video in front of new audiences. Otherwise, that's it. That's all I have for this week. I'm Mike the Bowtie Writer. I will see you all next time. Okay, just kidding. There was one tiny other thing that I want to talk about really, really fast. It was part of my footage last week that got cut by Adobe Premiere. Thank you for eating that footage. That was great. This is Fate, a delightful little role-playing game that's very different from anything like Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder. The reason that I mention this game is because when you're reading it, there is basically a whole mini-course in how to write great fiction inside the later part of this book. Yes, they're saying it's a section about how to run the game, but in reality, the lessons they are giving are applicable to any kind of fiction. It is a succinct masterpiece. I highly recommend you check it out just for that set of fiction as well. Although the game itself is really interesting as well. Check it out. All right, for real, that's it. That's all I have this time. I'm Mike, the Bowtie Writer. I will see you all next time.